Stopping leaks in houses begins with stopping leaks on paper. The joint between foundation and the earth is a place where water can move through capillarity and heat can flow through conduction. Insulation below a slab will stop most of the heat flow, but often the edges are not completely detailed, which paves the way for damp, cold floors. If the air leak is in the slab, it can draw soil gases and radon into the living space. The wall framing represents an uninsulated bridge to the outdoors. Air can leak through joints between studs, plates, and plywood. Windows amount to three-dimensional holes that can be tricky to visualize, but they need to be sealed against water, air, and heat leaks. Gaps along the perimeter really add up, so it's smart to go the extra mile inside and out. The roof wall connection is like the other spots. Thermal bridges and three-dimensional air passageways. Spray foam insulation in a stud cavity is a great way to seal the cavities, but it won't solve the thermal bridging problem or the problem of air leaks through gaps and framing. That can be done with a layer of rigid insulation on the outside. Of course, thickening the walls means rethinking how they align, and moving the wall in this case solves the thermal bridge problem at the bottom of the wall. Where walls and floors meet can hide many more leaky spots. To solve the problems at the slab, make sure it's isolated with insulation and the walls are sealed to the floor. The huge capillary connection can be solved with the paint on waterproofing over the footing before the wall is poured and covering the inside of the stem wall after it's poured. Filling gaps and connections between building materials in wall, floor, and roof assemblies can improve home performance and help you pass the pen test with flying colors.